FBI Studios. This is Truth and Justice, a crowdsourced investigation in real time. I'm Bob Rock. Hey, Truth and Justice listeners. I know it's a little bit out of the ordinary for me to make a video version of the podcast outside of Patreon, but this week's episode was incredibly difficult to track on audio alone. In Season 12, Episode 46, I broke down this map. In this video, I'm going to break down where the sector data shows us Robert and Christian were moving on the night of the murders. I'm hoping that this video presentation will be a little easier to understand and digest. I'm taking the time to do this because this evidence is critically important. So let's start out by me cleaning most of this off the map. What you see here is just the relevant locations. Robert and Christian's houses, Sacred Heart Church, James Workman Middle School, and all of the cell tower locations. So let's start out with Christian. At 548, 558, 603, 618, and 622, he connects to Tower 665. Presumably, he was home and stationary during those calls. So now, let's look at Robert. He appears to be home and was connected to Tower 707 Sector 1 for a call at 559, when he talked to Christian at 603, when he talked to Becky at 614, and when he called Christian back at 618. Our night begins at 645 p.m. At this point, Christian is on the move. He's no longer connected to the tower that covers his house. His 645 call connects to Tower 707, which is the tower that covers Robert's house. We don't have sector data for Christian, so all we know is that he was connected somewhere to this tower. I placed the call in Sector 3, but he could have been all the way to Robert's house by this point. So now that we're at Robert's house, sometime between 645 and 650, the guys are about to head towards the Sacred Heart Church. So let me show you that route. This is the 20 minute route to get to the church. And while we're at it, I just want to highlight Highway 74 because a few people said it was hard to see on the map. So this orange line here is Highway 74. And while we're down here, let me quickly show you what sectors cover this stretch of 74. First, we have Tower 745, Sector 3. As you can see, This is exactly what this antenna was designed to cover. It's a microcell that shoots straight north from the tower, covering that section of 74 completely. But there is overlapping coverage here. You can see Tower 705, Sector 2, also covers Highway 74 here. Tower 705, Sector 2 is a macrocell and actually extends much further down 74 than I'm showing here. As I've mentioned, This is the sector of Tower 705 that has spotty coverage south of Tower 745 on Highway 74. Before we leave this area, I want to show you very clearly how we know that Robert wasn't on 74 during that 7.13 p.m. call. Here is the expected coverage area for the microcell Tower 705 Sector 1. As you can see, it doesn't touch Highway 74 at all. But this is just my analysis of the sector's coverage area. So here, let me overlay Gladiator's drive test coverage area of the sector. As you can see, Gary Gillette confirms that 705 Sector 1 does not provide coverage on Highway 74 at all. All right, so now let me clear all this off the map and let's get to our route. We know Robert and Christian are on the move because of this call from Becky to Robert at 6.53 p.m. He ignores this call, but as you can see, both the initial and final cells for this call connect to Tower 707, Sector 3. So we know they have left the house at this point. Then here at 6.59 p.m., Becky calls again. Again, the call is ignored. And now Robert's phone is connected to Tower 707, Sector 1, on both ends of this call. At 7 o'clock, Robert calls 411, and he's still connected to Tower 707, Sector 1, on both ends of that call. 
The next call is at 7.01 p.m. This is where Robert actually calls the Sacred Heart Church. It's a 33-second call that starts on Tower 707, Sector 1, and switches over to Tower 705, Sector 2, during the call. And it's an outgoing call, so we can use the initial and the final cell phase, both for location. At this point, they know they're not going to church because Robert found out that there was no 730 Mass. They continue down Highway 111, and at 705, Becky now calls Christian. This is her third call to the guys during this short trip. Christian again ignores the call, and he is connected to Tower 705. We don't know which sector he's connected to, but Robert tries to call Sam Geyer at the same time, an outgoing call. His call begins and ends on Tower 705, Sector 2. Seconds later, Sam calls back. This is the call where Sam told us that they talked about his paintball gun. They talked for about two and a half minutes. And this call represents a critical few moments in time. The state claims that during this call, the guys turned south on Highway 74, like you see here, and continued on to the crime scene but we've proven that that's impossible. It's also unlikely that they would have made the turn to commit the murders during the conversation with Sam about the paintball gun. What the data actually shows is that they continued on Highway 111 for the duration of the call like you see here. The call begins and ends on Tower 705, Sector 2. The next call is Christian calling Becky and hanging up on her at 7.09 p.m. All we know about this call is that he's connected to Tower 523 initially. We don't have his sector data. Then at 7.10, Becky calls him back and he ignores the call. Again, the initial connection is to Tower 523. Then lastly, we have the call that completely disproves the state's theory. Here, at 7.13 p.m., Becky calls Robert again. It's a 27-second unanswered call with a final cell face of Tower 705, Sector 1. From here, we have no more connected calls to use for location. So what you're seeing here in red is what I believe is the most logical route back to Christian's house. Something interesting is that when you look at both my estimated coverage and the Gladiator drive test coverage, you see that there's a possibility that the next two calls at 727 and 734 that didn't connect could have just came in while they were driving in what looks to be a huge dead zone up by the interstate. The background map here is current, and even on that, that's today's map, you can see that there's not a lot to cover in that part of the valley. Open space and golf courses, not many houses and not many businesses, and it was even less densely populated 17 years ago. All right, let me clear all this off, and I'm going to do a quick recap. I'm just going to break down Robert's calls here because we have all of the info necessary to actually show his locations based on the sector coverage. We don't have that with Christian. So here we go. From 6 o'clock on, Robert is at home, connected to Tower 707, Sector 1. At 6.50, they start headed towards the Sacred Heart Church, and at 6.53, he connects to 707, Sector 3, when Becky calls. They turn south onto 111, and Becky calls again at 6.59. He again ignores that call, and he calls 411 at 7 o'clock. Both of these calls start and end on Tower 707, Sector 1. At 7.01 p.m., he calls Sacred Heart. The call starts on Tower 707, Sector 1, and switches to Tower 705, Sector 2 during the call. They now know they're not going to church. They continue south on 111, and at 7.05, Robert tries to call Sam Geyer. That call starts and ends on 7.05, Sector 2. Then, seconds later, Sam calls back, and he talks to Robert for about two and a half minutes. This call also begins and ends on Tower 7.05, Sector 2. Then comes the last call with a connection, the 7.13 p.m. call that connects to Tower 7.05, Sector 1. After that, we have no connections until Robert checks his voicemail at 10.23 p.m. That call connected to Tower 88, Sector 1. What's interesting about this connection is that Sector 1 of Tower 88 doesn't cover Christian's house, but it does show that it covers James Workman Middle School 
where the guys said they were when they were playing paintball and they ended their night. I want to point out, I have had people from the area tell me that there was no coverage of James' work in middle school at this time. And that very well may be true. But I can only base this analysis off what I see on the map. And what I see is Tower 88 is only a mile away from the middle school, almost due north, and there's nothing between the tower and the school but an open field. But unfortunately, Gladiator never drove back there to test it. I have people telling me that there wasn't coverage back there. I don't understand why that would be. So I'm just basing this off of what I see on the map. The important thing is that this call doesn't fit at all with Bodmer's drive test. On the drive test that he testified to at trial, the one that only took 38 minutes, he drove north on 74 to 111, then northwest on 111 to Date Palm, then north up to Christian's house. For starters, that route makes no sense at all. According to the state, Robert never went to Christian's house that night before the murders. They told the jury that Christian picked Robert up and they went straight to the crime scene. So why on earth would they be going to Christian's house to begin with? He should have been going to Robert's house to drop him off. And secondly, we now know that even if they were going to Christian's house, they never would have connected to Sector 1 of Tower 88 on that route. Had they taken this route, it's not Tower 88 Sector 1 that they would have connected to. They actually would have connected to Tower 88 Sector 2, or Tower 605, Sector 3, or even the tower that Christian was connected to when he was home earlier in the day, Tower 665, Sector 2. Look at all of this overlapping coverage at the end of Bodmer's route. If the route that he had to take to make this drive inside of the 38-minute window necessary to show that Robert and Christian could have been at the crime scene when Becky was lit on fire, Robert's phone would have connected to one of these three sectors, not Tower 88, Sector 1, which would make his drive test completely invalid. Now, listener Andrew Nielsen proposed that the guys would have come down 74, continued straight north on Monterey to I-10, head up to Ramon, over to Date Palm, and on to Christians. And that's the route that took Dr. Shiloh 44 minutes at 10 p.m. on a Sunday night. Now, on that route, Robert could have connected to Tower 88 Sector 1. But again, why would they be going to Christian's house at all? What needs to happen is for Robert to be dropped off at home. And we know that they didn't spend hardly any time in the Tower 88 Sector 1 area after that call to voicemail. 20 minutes after he checks his voicemail, at 10.43 p.m., Robert calls his girlfriend Sarah, connected to Tower 707 Sector 1 the sector that covers his house and his grandma's house, which is across the street where his cousin was staying. So the last thing we're going to look at in this video is how the phone data compares to what Robert said he and Christian were doing that night when he was interviewed just 18 hours later. He said that after doing the paintball stuff at James Workman, he and Christian headed back to his house and that they stopped at the AMPM gas station on Date Palm and Gerald Ford on the way so he could get chapstick for his cousin. Making that quick stop would make 20 minutes just about exactly the right amount of time for him to be back at his grandma's house at 10.43 p.m. to call Sarah, connected to Tower 707, Sector 1. There's no time there for them to have gone to Christian's house. The state's theory is provably false. And in order for Andrew's route to work, you would have to believe that after the murders, Robert and Christian drove this insane route all the way around the valley. There's not enough time for them to have gone to Christian's house, like I said. They would have had to have just driven in this huge loop to get back to Robert's. And even with that, based on my experience with Dr. Shiloh and Andrew in the car, even then, making that drive in 38 minutes is almost impossible. Andrew was able to do it, but neither myself or Shiloh could. The reality is this. The phone records 100% support the guys being exactly where Robert said they were. After paintball at James Workman, he turned his phone on, checked his voicemail, saw the text from his cousin. They went to the gas station, and then Christian dropped him off at Grandma's house, and Robert called his girlfriend. There is, in fact, zero evidence that Robert and Christian ever 
left the valley that night. None.